What is up everybody, it's your boy Verta here and thank you so much for stopping by ladies and gents, we have some crazy news. We have some absolutely crazy news. Now I need to be honest with you, it's data mining and data mining is not always correct. However, it's very rarely this specific and because of this, I actually um, got my interest peaked and I really wanted to talk to you about this data mining. Now um, for the people that don't know what data mining is, let me just explain it to you in a very simple way. I'm going to give you an example of data mining. Um, whenever you want to put certain content into a game, you have to make a placeholder for this and name that placeholder in a certain way and then encrypt it. Now, this is made so that, you know, certain files don't go into the wrong places and the game functions in a normal way. This is just a very pure example and not a most adequate example into you understanding about how people come around those data mines and essentially what they're doing is they're breaking the encryption of the file placeholder so that you know what's supposed to get in there and usually that's considered a leak. Now, often enough, developers do take their time to kind of make sure that those are pretty much near unbreakable but often enough people miraculously manage to get into them in world of warcraft if you've played this game you know that data mining is very very common there are pretty much organizations of people that exist for the sakes of data mining and in video we also have this it's a bunch of russian guys who pretty much break those encryptions to see what the future holds now Today, however, is something exceptionally specific and we're going to go into it. So let's talk about the future of video. We're going to be talking about the brand new continent, which is supposed to come out. Yeah, uh, it's called the Demon Lands and we're going to talk about Dosa Awakening. So very important things that they are pretty much on every video player's mind right now. But however, I will express a little bit of, there is a hesitation in the way this is presented. I'm going to corrected in a way because as always you know it's korean translation it's not always um, adequate so i will take my um i would take the translation away and kind of just guess what they're talking about so we will talk about the first thing is the preparation for the aerial Ariel ter territory has begun. Molten hellstone textures have been added. The code name of the territory at the moment is BD or Devil Doom or Devil's Doom slash Devil's Abyss. Now this is exceptionally important because of the way it's being phrased. Preparation of the aerial territory has begun with the molten hellstone textures have been added. Or in other words, what is being said here is that the demon lands are in preparation. The demon lands are pretty much fully textured and ready. And now we just need the finalization part, such as basically think of it like this. The map is completely ready. Let's fill the map with whatever, with, with whatever we need to fill the map. Now, this is giga important. And why this is giga important? important is because if you paid attention to Heidel Ball in France, basically what they said is that we will be getting after the Dose Awakening, we'll be getting the Mountain of Eternal Winter Part 2, which is, is supposed to be one of the biggest, dare I say, lore revelations for a video. It's supposed to be a very big lore heavy expansion. And instead of that, it seems like if nothing is mentioned here, and this is basically the latest thing which they have added, we're looking into probably the next piece of content being the Demon Lands instead. Now, this is huge. This is huge on so many levels. This is huge for story. This is huge for video in general and the implications that come with it. So let me just give you a, a proper explanation. Now, in Mountain of Eternal Winter Part 1, when Belmorn took the Enix Flame, essentially a little bit of lore, lore stuff, just, just bear with me, will you? When he took the Enix Flame, we thought that that was actually the Enix Flame. However, the staff, which is used to point towards the Enix Flame, didn't even budge. And then it was later revealed that this was not the Enix Flame, but actually a real fragment of Hadoom. And Jordine slash Belmorn, or rather, dare I say, the dead Jordine, and now only Belmorn remains, unfortunately became so un unbelievably powerful that... Right now, he's probably a servant of Kadoom or somebody that wields Kadoom's power. That is not a good thing. Now, in Mountain of Eternal Winter Part 2, we're supposed to enter to get an answer to a couple of mysteries, such as where is the real Unix Flame? What is going on with a Guardian? What is going on with Dracania? Will Mark Thunan ever, ever come out of the mountain? And most importantly, is there really a gate towards the abyss there? Because if there is a gate towards the abyss, why is Kafras having any remnants there? And can Kafras be retrieved, which has been our objective for the past 10 years in Black Desert Online? Yes, for the people that do not know, our entire trajectory 
as players towards the quest line and everything that we've ever done is to try and find Kefras because Kefras holds the answers to us not dying <laughs> out basically because of Hadoom's influence. This is literally it. Now, Scholar comes into play by finding a way to kind of split uh, herself up with Hadoom's darkness and herself and basically defeating the evil part of you to remain pure so that's going to be probably something we'll maybe even see a little bit of Scholar coming into play but the most important bit of this is that we probably will not even get to see it as soon as we thought so if we're going to jump into the demon lands then we're jumping into the gate of alieli now the alieli gate is essentially if you've ever watched black desert online's hashashin trailer uh for playstation then this is the particular gate and this is essentially the gate towards the demon lands or as it's said here and this is why i believe this so well to be true is the devil's doom the devil's abyss it basically alludes towards us entering the particular demon lands through a gate now this is important this is so important because it's not just a step one thing the demon lands are supposed to be a two-part expansion not just that but let me just hide this really quick and we're gonna go into the game just so you understand how big the demon lands is supposed to be so we're looking at potential probably over two years of content over here that we will never probably even get close to mountain of eternal winter part two the demon lands is essentially everything from over here with my mouse to here and we have also these edges now if you look into this particular part it's pretty much half of valencia it is pretty much serendia and calfion this is a huge area this is really a huge area if you look at how big it is let's go very very fast into the land of the morning light it's pretty much similar size so this is a giant piece of content that they're just throwing at us now why are they doing this is very interesting and let's not lie to ourselves the reception towards demon lands was absolutely mwah. like it was it was people were excited for the first time ever and i made a cover about this uh, demon lands speaking about from lore perspective to what we can actually find there and what could even be the upgrades that we find there so the idea here is that the reception for demon lands was much more you know positive and in fact it was overwhelmingly positive and people didn't really care about what would happen to the second part of mountain of eternal winter so let's just go back over here and talk a little bit about the gates of alieli so this is essentially hashashin's expansion you know how yonwa is essentially the maiwa protagonist of mount of land of the morning light well we will probably look for hashashin now because hashashin is the guardian to the gates of alieli and that's incredibly important it's his calling because of what happens in his lore Long story short, he almost doomed the entire world, but last second he managed to snap out of it and actually protect us. However, the gate is open and we need to figure out what's going on in there. We need to figure out a way to close this particular gate. Now, is this within the demon lands or at least towards demon lands? Hey, that's a plot hole we do not know, we never known, and nobody has ever told us. It's always speculation. Now, Alieli in particular is the name of the Demon Lands uh, zone itself. At least so it is called within the lore uh, from eight or nine years ago when the Valencia region was released. I think it was eight years ago or something like that. So the Alieli is that particular uh, that particular place. Now, a very important thing uh, for us to, to really uh, talk about is that the altar of Alieli is something, <laughs> something that is, you, you've probably seen this, the statue with the two snakes. This is one of the biggest mysteries in video lore like we do not know who this is we see double snakes uh which could be all himself it could be doom it could be zark in a human form it could be Ibador. it could be everybody we just simply do not know and video mobile has been essentially giving us a little bit of hints on this now without annoying you way too much onto this um going into alieli first is essentially us breaking the continuity of the story and I'm not sure if that's a smart idea. So if we're looking into what's going to happen in Mountain of Eternal Winter Part 2, that's a comp that that's a, essentially us continuing what happened into our world without Land of the Morning Light even uh, being there. So it was something that was supposed to happen a long time ago. And now us having yet another obstacle to the story 
I'm not really sure if that's smart. But then again, in Alieli, a lot of cool things happen. Like, it's where, where the Black Spirit actually arrived at first. So, the meteor which fell into the world landed into the Demon Land, and essentially the Black Spirit started going through the world from there. So, we will find the origins of our little guy. Probably we'll be talking very heavily about it. We will be probably finding new ways to upgrade our gear, such as new types of Black Stones that are probably more potent, more powerful. We are looking at potential higher enhancement levels or guaranteed enhancement levels you get the idea all of these things we have spoken about before in fact we kind of even predicted sovereign weapons because of the way the lore was kind of handed out in mountain of sorry land of the morning light so in other words we are probably looking at uh something that could empower leftover gear which is exceptionally hard to enhance and i'll leave it to this <laughs> essentially free for interpretation now Let's talk about Dosa, and Dosa is a big thing. Dosa Awakening is a very big thing, people are very excited about it. So let's talk about this and, le and read what these guys are saying. Uh, Dosa Awakening is ready, and I emphasize upon ready. Essentially, this is done. A number of ready-made quests and logic files have appeared. Those same, there's very same logic files, such as the, the ones which I call as placeholders. Those files are supposed to tell you where this is supposed to land once it is delivered. So those, those things uh, in particular. The class is completely ready, as well as its backstory, combat style, and quests. The class is 100% ready to be delivered. Now, in Tosa Awakening's quest, you will have to meet the old teacher, Kang He, and defeat her. If you've played the succession part of Tosa, of Dosa, uh, so, um, uh, basically Succession Awakening, or how you call it, Dosa Succession, essentially, you are going to see that there was a woman over there, mysterious, and Dosa was very interested in actually reconnecting with this, uh, with this woman. And a little bit of something that I don't really like is the fact that nowadays classes are being released with Succession first, and that breaks the idea of why Successions are there in the first place, such as it really boils down to Elezra. The entirety of Elezra's motif for us, the player, is stop using borrowed power and become the weapon. This is the difference between Awakening and Succession because Awakening is always borrowed power. It's not you, it is something else. It is an artifact, it's a piece of equipment, it is an empowerment. Instead of you depending on the powers of gods or powerful um, weaponry, etc., etc., then become the weapon yourself because nothing but you can save you from Hadoom. This is Elezra's motif, pretty much, for the succession part she awakens your true self rather than giving you some borrowed power out of somebody out there and that's one of the cool things about Elezra due to the encryption of the NPC names he uh, the da data miner cannot clear uh, cannot clearly data mine who is else participating in the awakening branch there is the Biyun guy or another character Dosa awakening combat style is formed on the gradual transition from one of the five elements into another, in total, Dosa owns five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Dosa summons will be a black and gold tiger, which we did see uh, some time ago. No repeated mention of a horse was found in the summons, and I have the horse over here. Some time ago, somebody leaked, somebody said about uh, a horse, which will be a great part of Dosa's Awakening. Uh, nothing has been found, probably it's scrapped, but this is a very interesting thing, because this horse here, in particular, is pretty much a very unique one. We haven't seen such a horse before, and I've had a theory for quite some time that having the Celestial Pathfinder and having and having the three horse which you cannot switch while moving could be something that you know people there might not be really a fond of so we might be looking at the combined three tier 10 horses into one which could function as all three simultaneously it's been something that has been on the people's mind for a long time and this is my personal belief of course no uh, evidence for this but it's kind of something that we we really think is going to happen because it's it's weird it's weird to not have it so we might see the god horse itself now let's talk about those five elements because for the people uh, watching this right now wood the element of wood what the hell is this the element of metal yeah I was like this uh, at first time but my very good friend um, Misty who is also a partner in, in, in PA uh, she really she 
she just helped me through understanding what this is and this is apparently a Chinese philosophy or a Far Eastern philosophy which also the Koreans have adopted themselves and it goes about generating interaction and overcoming interaction as you can see it has wood with fire earth metal and water but yeah it's essentially something that's been already established into the Eastern mythos into the philosophy of it so you do get to see this also with Dose Awakening so in reality it's going to be a very unique class a very unique take on a class and that's really good because we have been lacking uniqueness with uh, recent classes so ladies and gents this is all that i can tell you about this particular data mine and as always don't take this at face value is 100 true as i said earlier this is data mining we cannot really be sure but it's better to talk about it than simply discard it because it might not be true so guys tell me what you think down below into the comments be active help with the algorithm like sub and i'll see you soon hopefully more of this comes out in the future see you guys enjoy yourselves verdict out